Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, Town of Sitchwick Board of Selectmen meeting for uh, March 15th, 2011. It's approximately 7.02, and so we're starting. Are there any uh, electronic devices being recorded tonight? Aside from our own, Mr. Rosen, Roser. Um, good. Seeing none, uh, let's move to uh, the very first agenda item, which is um, acceptance of agenda. Mr. Chair, I think we should... Um I think we're going to be postponing item number five, so I would move to accept the agenda as modified with the uh, deletion of item number five. Fair enough. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Harris. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, so now we move on to the walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins this evening? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which happens to be agenda item number three. It's a discussion and vote, uh, transfer of the common vehicular's license of Dad's place at 222 Heavily Road. And it is um, the applicant, Mr. Patal here. Could you please come on up to the mic, please? And it's my understanding that you're looking to have the uh, vehicular license transferred yeah. um, from the present owner um, to yourself? Is that it? Okay. And just so the present owner, Kim, has already been, have they been paid up or are they paid? Yes. Okay. And so it's just a matter of you buying a business? Is that what's going on or what's, why is the need for the transfer? Um, because of change of the ownership. Change of the ownership. Okay. So now you, you're taking over in some yeah. form of the property? Okay. Um, and uh, questions at all from the board on that? <coughs> Mr. Vignani? Are you keeping it the same? Yeah. Same operations, convenience store, little grocery store. Yeah. Right. Do you live in Situate? Yeah. I, I had been working there for seller since three years. Oh, you've been working there for three years. Great. And you're at you live at Standish. Well, you're on fair enough. So you're in the neighborhood. So you understand it. That's good. Other questions at all from the board? Just a comment. I've seen them there. They put a lot of time in. I believe it's yep. him and his wife. They seem to put in a lot of hours in that business. Yep. Oh, good. It's a great location. It has a lot of history um, from way back in the 20s or 30s, so it's nice to see that you're willing to continue that on. So Thank you. The town appreciates it. I'm sure the neighbors in Shore Acres and Egypt area also appreciate it, so um, you're doing Thank a great you. service to the town. Motion, Motion please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to transfer the common Vic license held by Dad's Place to Dad's Place Store, 222 Hadley Road in Situate. Is there a second? Thank you. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani for the discussion. Question from the <coughs> audience. Saying none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you thank very you much. much. Good, Good luck. luck. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number four, a discussion vote on the bond issue and the treasure collector. Jane, could you please come on up? Appreciate it. Briefly, if you could just describe what you're looking to do. Um, we sold a bond last week, as you all know. I've been talking about it for the past couple of months. Um, it was $9,756,000. We did excellent in the sale. Um, we got a true interest cost rate of 3.11, um, and that includes a premium upfront cash of $485,000. So we sold very, very well. Um, we received our bond rating. I think all of you received a copy of it in your packet. And um, we did well. It was comparable to what we were already rated with Moody's. This time we made a change and we um, received a rating, did a site visit with Standard & Poor's. So it was a comparable rate at AA with a stable outlook. So, um, but if you read the information in there, it was very positive with the future uh, room for an upgrade, hopefully. But if I may, just yeah. before we get off the subject, I think it, uh, the comments paid uh, particular attention to the whole financial team, and that's from the town administrator to yourself, Jane, to the finance uh, finance forecasting committee. I think it's all part of the, the same team, and it spoke very positively of it. And I think the reason uh, that we were able to keep the bond rating in these days is, is doing no small part to uh, what all you people have done from the financial uh, Forecast the committee up to the town administrator. It's uh, uh, thank you for for keeping us up there. You're welcome, Mr. Murray. If I could just follow up, thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could just follow up what Mr. Norton said, and I'm glad that the press is here, Kelly's here, and people from you know else because you know we had as part of this a, a pretty detailed discussion of our finances by Standard and Poor's, which is certainly an independent assessment. It's not coming from any of us or anything in-house. And I just want to read just a couple things, if I may. Sure. Um, 
the town's uh, finances. Quote, very strong income and property wealth levels in proximity and access, access to diverse Boston metropolitan statistical area. Improved financial management practices and good combined stabilization and general fund positions. Low overall net debt burden and modest future capital needs. Unemployment rate of 7.1% remains favorable as it is below Commonwealth and national averages. Fundamentally, the town's main revenues are consistent and strong. And admittedly, I'm cherry picking words, but the other stuff is just pretty much statistics. This is all the sort of subjective stuff they talk about. The town recently hired an experienced town administrator who in a relatively short period of time improved several financial management practices. The town is thorough in its budget preparation and forecasting processes and conservative in nature with assumptions borne out by variance analyses. Along with the budget, management also produces a five-year capital improvement plan. Tony, you heard about that? That identifies funding sources and is linked to the town's multi-year forecast. Capital improvement plan outlines projects that will be funded each year through the budget and also establishes guidelines for debt borrowing. They do make some suggestions that we can improve on, but they are things that I'm aware of that we are actually working on. So in addition to the numbers that Jane provided and all those statistics, I was just particularly drawn to the narrative that comes from Standard & Poor's, particularly in the context of everybody decrying this or decrying that. There's a lot of good things that we're doing, and I just wanted to draw people's attention to that. And if, uh, Kelly, if you want this document, I'd be glad to give it to you if you want some quotes from it. I also have a press release that was provided to me by First South Southwest that I was going to give to Kelly sure. tonight. Sure, that would be great. To put in it. Um, I Thank just you, Chair. Sorry, mention nope. too that um, in some of the documentation from Standard & Poor's, it stresses the importance of the collection rate and the revenues, um, the tax revenues being the main source. And um, I know things are difficult, and, and I know collections are very tight here, but it was critical that we maintained a strong collection rate and over the past few years we've been able to maintain that and just want to say thank you to my staff as well um, that it's really paid off and, and it's much appreciated so um, it was it was very good the, the um, time and effort especially by Tricia put into that the assistance of Mary and Steve Jasenbowski Mary Gallagher I meant um, I don't think people realize behind the scenes how much work is really involved in preparing for a bond issue. This particular bond issue had several, as you can see, I don't think you've seen the paperwork that you have to sign yet, but... I have. Um, oh, you have. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> there are several, and Kim has seen it, there are several within the 9.7 million, there are several different small items within that. So. It's been a lot of work, but it really paid off for us. We included some things that I hadn't initially planned to include in there, like the Wampatuck, but given the low rate environment, it, it really was a good decision, I think, that we made. So I'm very proud of that. So. Sean, did you have I just have one quick question, Jane. What <coughs> is the difference between an interest rate and then a true interest cost? Well, that's because um, as part of the, um, we have this big document that, you know, I, I spend a couple of months preparing with other departments in town hall, um, getting all the backup materials on our financial position. Um, and as part of that document that the bidders see when it's made public um, is a requirement to include the premium. So um, as part of the list, we had eight different people that bid on our bonds, which was very good. And some of them had different premiums <coughs> that they were including as part of that bid. So. When you look at it in total, um, it nets out to that uh, true interest cost of okay. 3.11 because they're giving us $485,000 up front. Okay. Um, and also, I just wanted to mention something because we've discussed it at previous meetings when we were talking about the capital project, uh, uh, capital plan a couple of weeks ago, that um, we were talking about the terms and, and um, relieving some of the pressure on the general fund for future budgets and such. Um, and I had mentioned that when we do the bond, that it'll be part of the vote, and you'll see that tonight um, in the paperwork that you'll be signing, that it has the different longer useful life because equipment attached statutory requirements is a five-year borrowing limit, um, but we've extended it for several pieces of equipment to 10 <coughs> years. Um, it might not be 10 years in this bond because I may have done some short terms, so in total it is 10 years. So you're voting that tonight. Just two quick comments. Um, great job on that. Number one, that's a great rate and, and a great premium. So 
just so you just don't understand, we get $485,000 back from them in cash, of which some of it has to go to actually pay for the whole process, mm -hmm. and some of it has to be allocated to um, um, the Wampatuck right. uh, debt yeah. exclusion portion. But there is a chunk of money there that um, that's going to be at the disposal, mm -hmm. possibly be at the disposal. We we'll have to discuss how it should be allocated, but for you know <coughs> some, some sort of use in the future. So that that's an extra benefit. Um, and then you also mentioned the. Um, uh, the bonding and the whole capital plan. Uh, Jane sent sent me over and forwarded to everybody the capital plan, that spreadsheet. Um, last week I was really concerned about what the um, impact of the debt uh, capital plan was going to have on the debt, and um, the numbers that we had last time we weren't clicking in terms of what I was looking for and what she provided, but it actually does show that it's keeping it at a fairly level number. So it's not a hu it's not going to have an impact at what we've done so far in the out years. So that was that was very. Um, comforting for me to see that and thank you for providing that that's a document we should get every year when we go over the capital plan so we can see exactly what the impact is on the out years and um, you know you had choices a B and C depending on how long we want to amortize stuff for so thank you for preparing that no and we'll discuss that for the future years as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago whether I bond again in two years or three years um, the extension of, of um, what may be the five-year term versus extending it to 10 years or 15 years for some of the equipment. Good. Motion, Mr. Chairman? Please, please, Mr. Uh, <coughs> I think I have to make this one. Do you? Okay. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen approve the vote as printed in the certificate of vote and include a copy of said document with the minutes of tonight's meeting, 3-15-11. Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Murray. Any discussion? Uh, oh, I actually forget that. Any questions? All right. All in f um, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good. Mr. Chairman, may I have one moment of just, I noticed we have a, uh, a visitor tonight, a, a, a Boy Scout maybe here for, in attendance for a uh, marriage badge or something. Why don't you do it in, uh, just uh, introduce yourself with your name, so. Great, thank you. John, did you get that? Did that come through? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. And thank you. Pick the right LeBlanc. meeting. <laughs> be a sh hopefully a short one. <laughs> Might be a quick one. <laughs> thank you. Right. Thank you, Jane. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Jane. Um, agenda item is um, moving on and deleted, so we're moving on to agenda item number six, a discussion vote award contract for water pipes fittings, bid number 11-WA-01. Mr. Cafferty. Good evening. What are we doing here tonight? Um, well, we got a couple bids. This one in particular, we went through what the water department typically uses for pots and materials each year doing water repairs. We spliced it all together, put it all together in one package, and put it out to bid so that we could purchase it in one lump sum instead of piecemeal as it goes. So the water department, um, instead of having a break and needing to run to a supplier in the middle of the night, has the materials on hand and can do the repairs. And by bundling it all together, we're instead of paying list price, we're getting a better bid price on it. So that's what this contract is. And how do you come up with these numbers? In other words, the numbers that you're, you're are you suggesting that in the course of a year, these are potentially what we anticipate for um, for parts. Fix, for parts and fixing it? In other words, is that what you're basing it on a year, two years, three one years? Year. This is one year's approximate value. And the way we worded the contract is that we have if we have additional pieces that we use, um, just say, for example, we use um, one of the items or T's because sometimes you have to cut a T in if you're putting a new hydrant in. So there's a cast iron T. There's a limit for two of them there. If we need additional, say we use two of them up because we happen to put five hydrants in that are destroyed or hit by cars, then we can buy it at that same unit price from that one supplier. That's the way it's stipulated in the contract for one year. Uh, let me ask you this. So in, other, so in other words, what's the basis that you look? Do you look the past year? Is that what you're past looking years, at? Past years, yeah. I worked with two years, 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 and we put it together on, on what they figured they would use in a year. So we're, we're ba basically hedging our bets saying that we're anticipating the cost to go up so we can lock in. Is there a downside if the prices go down and that we're still stuck? Well, I don't think the prices right? are going to go down, and we're able to purchase it in as one lump sum as opposed to running to a supplier 
um, for each individual piece. It's it cobbles everything up and it makes it a little nicer. Mr. Harris, typically what we do, I think, if, if I'm speaking, just correct me. But <clears throat> if we needed something, we'd run over to Holdley and Rockland and get what we needed. Mm -hmm. This is probably, is it fair to say, it might be a unit price per lineal foot for six inch cast iron or eight inch or you know it's, cast iron we tees. covered everything that they typically right. use so in a year it's not it's not like we're locked into a dollar amount it's probably per foot or per item isn't it? we would lock into a dollar amount that now instead of having be, because we went to different supply houses for the bid and we were able right. to get a, a better price right one of the things that we would have is we'd take delivery of this material for okay. these costs, right. have it at the water department. That's so right. instead of having a water break at you know, the lighthouse, the water department driving to Hoadley's or driving to Canton to go pick up the pots at 3 o'clock in the morning, they have them there and they can go make the fix right That's then a, and there. You will take a delivery of all the stock. We'll take yeah. delivery of everything Good. and, and we'll right. use it. Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't use it this year, you use it the following year. So yeah, we'll always, we'll always use the pieces. Right. But as I said, we can use that same unit price. Right. Over and above this for for purchasing, that's great. Um, because our can you know total over the year is probably over twenty five thousand pots and pieces when things go. But this puts it all nice and neat by master and law that we put it up to bid. Mm -hmm. Close to on the pri on the uh, bid prices, they were very close. Yeah, good, pretty tight. Other questions from the board? Motion, please. <coughs> Move the board stock and vote to award. The contract for water pipes and fittings, contract number 11-WA-01 <coughs> to Ferguson Waterwork Sumner and Dunbar of Canton, Massachusetts for a total bid price of $32,486.81 with payment to be made at the unit prices. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. Any questions in the audience? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Great. Moving on to agenda item number seven, it's a discussion vote. Award contract seawall repair number 11-FS-02. Kevin, what are we looking at here with the seawall and where's the seawall we're looking to repair? This is the infamous femur repair job from 2007. Um, the repairs will take place in North Situate, First Cliff, Minor Beach, Second Cliff, and Third Cliff. Um, Can you say that again? North Situate? North Situate, Oops. First Cliff. Minot Beach, Second Cliff, and Third Cliff. Gotcha. And the plans are available for review in my office if anybody wants to come out and take a look at them. This is for the 2007 storm. Uh, we have all the FEMA paperwork we received recently, about six weeks ago or eight weeks ago. We're able to cobble it all together, get a bid out to place, and um, this is the net results of the bids uh, for the FEMA work. And it's tight money-wise, but we believe, you know, we're under what our value is for the total contract. But the other thing that we have is the FEMA money um, is running out soon, so we have to spend it or we'll lose it. These are private walls, are they not, that we're fixing, or? They're, they're various. Okay. Um, Private and public, but FEMA actually is the one who's actually paying for it. FEMA's the paying 75%, 25% of town funds are going into the walls. And actually, it's less than 25% because I, when we put the contract out to bid first, which was last year, and we didn't have all the FEMA funding. We didn't have the town match also. So I applied for a DCI grant. We got a DCI grant for $50,000, which is um, coming in as part of the town's portion. Our portion is about 203000 and out of that 203000 50000 is from that DCI grant. Okay. So. Mr. Norton? Um, just yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Are we running into a problem um, by putting up 25 percent of the total funds that will be used to uh, fix private seawalls when we have stated, I guess, over the past couple of months that we weren't going to spend town funds on private seawalls? Is there a, is there a conflict here, or am I reading something into it that that? that uh, more into it than I should. I don't think I am. No, I don't think you are either. I think, you know, we, we, we said that back in the past, and with all fairness to the people that we talked about back in January, um, you know, I, frankly, I can see that, you know, there's a little um, I see. Uh, uh, irony going on and um, kind of a, um, you know, 
a change of uh, position on it, and I'm, I'm a little leery about that. I realize that we do receive federal funds for it, but now we are saying that as a town we're going to pay for it. And frankly, out of fairness to those people, we're going to do it for this project. What about the remaining ones? I think that's my point, Mr. Mr. Harris. I guess the uh, class is quarter full rather than three quarters empty. The way I look at it, because I would, I see what Joe's saying, but I might say, geez, if if we can get, you know, if we only have to pay 25 percent, let's continue. If we don't do this, I, you know, Kevin can answer it better than me. It might go away, and then we might have to, if we want to fix, we might have to do the whole thing. Granted, then we'd only be doing the public ones, but. I'm not saying. Uh, and I just hold on one second, gentlemen. Just Kevin, the 25 percent that we have come up with has that been town authorized? Yeah. Yes. yes. Back in um, three or four years ago, we did it. It was it was years ago, and right? You know, I had thought about this. This project was already in the books yeah. prior to everything coming to light, yeah. and um, FEMA had the funding in in everything else. So. Um, but FEMA came in and said that this is storm related, and they're gonna uh, they're gonna you. fund it. FEMA came in, in from the 2007 storm right. and, and evaluated, but back in 2007, there wasn't the emphasis on private, public. Uh, I don't know if that was brought up. I wasn't here. I don't, I don't know what the issues were. But, but FEMA hasn't offered us money for some of the other repair work. You know, it hasn't qualified. Correct. Mr. Harris? I just one other comment. Um, has the Seawall Committee looked at this or no, where it came in at this it just it came in Thursday. We just got this on Thursday. We have talked about it in the Seawall Committee um, about the project and about funding it and you know how things were going with it. Um, but as I said, these these FEMA funds. The problem with the FEMA funds is is they will run out. Um, and actually, we have an extension on the FEMA funds. Um, yeah, I think they were supposed to run out in July, and we've asked for an extension for. We've been keeping them aware of where it was because we were delayed technically by FEMA getting their budget approved. That's why we never received the the project worksheets that we should have to do the project itself. Mr. Murray? Or Mr. Murray. Murray. Yeah, I, I just want to make it clear. I'm not necessarily saying vote against this. I'm just bringing to light a situation that I think might we might be facing down the road by voting for it. And I'm not, you know, 75 percent is very difficult to turn that kind of money down. Uh, that's all. I'm just bringing that through the board's attention. No, I think I think you're you're right to raise the issue. I mean, that's why I asked initially, is it a private or, or are they public walls? Well, and I think the inconsistency is that we were pretty much um, um, con you know, straightforward with the the residents who came in back in January saying no. And you know, I have to say, all right, this is an issue that frankly we have to address going forward and and I don't have an answer I just feel like public funds from the town shouldn't have to go for private walls um, just as much as public funds shouldn't go for fixing somebody's private wall or a stone wall or cutting down trees on their property or fixing their driveways or fixing their septic system or fixing a, a, a pipe a sewer or water pipe on their own property if it's unless it's a town issue but this certainly raises an issue that I frankly feel that out of fairness, they could turn around and say, and I'd have to say if they're sitting here tonight, you're right. We did contribute through town meeting public funds for repairing private seawalls. My biggest con bone of contention is, is that if public funds are going to go towards private rights or private I items or structures, there's got to be a public benefit to it. I understand the argument is generally, well, if the walls are, are, are broken, then it's going to impact potential public uh, infrastructure, whether it's water, sewer, roads. But I think a little bit more is that on the beaches or those areas, there's got to be some right of access. But that's an issue for a different day, I think. But I think you're absolutely right, Joe. I, I think, in all fairness to those people, I mean, right away I'm thinking, gee, we told them no, and now we're contributing public funds. It's already been voted, so it's not even like, you know, we can change it because it's been authorized by town meeting, and that's the democracy, and that's what's been spoken. But it's certainly an issue that I think we need to get a grip on before we do have for future, I'm, and I'm looking at you, Kevin, because you're just sitting there. No, it's okay. I'm, <laughs> but I mean, I'm I think good. that's an issue that we need to address because it's, it, out of fairness to them, I'd, I'd be sitting at home right now saying, for the love of Pete, what the heck are you folks thinking? You know, uh, we were in here and you're not going to contribute money, and now you're saying you are, you already have, and you've set a precedent. So, all fairness to them, I, I can appreciate it. Mr. Murray? Thank you, Tristan Chair. Um, yeah, it's an interesting point. Um, 
I think everybody's right here in identifying all sides of it. My take on this is uh, I have several things. One is I think the operative phrase is going forward, you know, moving forward. Town finances were different three or four years ago when this was all authorized and so on, and you know, we're, we've already made this commitment to the federal government, and the federal government's pretty much made it to us, so you know, I, I think really moving Good forward, point. here we are. I mean, regardless of the, even the 75-25, even if it was 50-50, I mean, the commitment's there, the money's there, we're, we're, I think, but you're absolutely right, I think moving forward. Some of these other points, I think, when we discuss this in the future that we need to consider is, is like, um, and there's subtleties, but uh, is it protecting a private beach? Um, or is it a, a wall that's protecting, you know, a region that happens to be located on private land that people are allowed to walk on historically versus people getting kicked off private beaches that are being protected by things? So, and we're not gonna answer these tonight, but sorts of subtleties in this that, that that the private versus public access get issue gets kind of gray. And then also some of these walls, I'm pretty sure, some aren't, but some of these walls I'm pretty sure, they're exactly continuous. Some of it's so-called public, and then you wouldn't even know it, but then some of it happens to cross private property, but it's one continuous structure. So you can't really fix the public part without fixing the private part. It's not that the private part is, is all nicely tied up in a bow or the public part isn't. So it's a, it's a lot of subtleties there, but both you guys are right, and I see just moving forward, we're gonna need to get our hands around this as funding goes, but I, I applaud Kevin, and as we all do, uh, we applaud the federal government for, for helping us on this, and uh, particularly with this very good bid price. And I agree, not that anybody, when the federal government's willing to pony up 75% of the cost, I mean, yeah, we'd be foolish not to accept it. Um, so I, I don't want anybody to think out there that you know we're trying to decline money when it's, it's offered. Um, and I don't think anybody on this board has, but it's just an issue that I think is worth discussing. You're, everybody's absolutely right. Yeah. Would you like motion? motion? Please. If motion. I can, I'd like to bring up bring up two issues on this. I we didn't do a full property research on this on this whole project. I was aware the area down in North Situate, a lot of the area down the glades, I believe, is private beach or held by a beach association. So we left that as an ad alternate. Um, we have enough money to do that. And the reason I kind of culled it out as an ad alternate because if we didn't have enough money, I knew that was a, a private area and, and we'd be able to pull that out to do the entire project. Um, otherwise, the base bid for the project instead of 786 was $610,000. Um, out of this $786,000 contract, we might have $805,000 or $810,000 total. So we don't have any room for change orders, additional work, or anything else. I've already made that clear to the contractor. Um, we're going to go out with this FEMA work and do exactly what's on that storm. We might have a sec what was exactly damaged from that storm. Mm -hmm. We might have a section of wall that's been destroyed from one of the other storms, and we're gonna go right by that, and we're gonna rebuild the section of wall that was culled out in that 2007 storm, and then we're gonna skip over a whole destroyed right. section do the next section. A lot of these FEMA projects are jumping up and down the coast, and you lose a lot, you spend a lot of your money in mobilization. If it was my choice, I would rather have all the FEMA money and let me pick a mile of seawall that I'll completely rebuild and right. just walk away from it that way. But that's not the essence of the FEMA, the FEMA money. You guys are going to get calls about it. People are going to say they came out with a machine, spent all this time and money, and they left my wall, which was worse than this guy's wall. And, and that's kind of the nature of the beast with this type of contract. Well, that's so. why, Kevin, you'll never be a federal bureaucrat. <laughs> way. That makes sense. And, and we told them in the meetings. We brought it up with FEMA in the meetings how, how frustrating it was for us. So, Tony? Kevin, when's this work going to happen? Um, I am, uh, I'm trying to fast track this as quick as possible. I've already had legal take a look at it. Uh, Jim Toomey's office has taken a look at it. He made a little addition to this. That's why there's a supplement to it. He wanted some additional language added from the contract. Um, <coughs> we're trying to get started within three weeks if we can get all the really? paperwork together, if they can get their bonds in and everything else, because we are under the gun with the FEMA time. Um, FEMA hasn't given us anything in writing where they said you have an extension but they've said verbally we're going to receive an extension. I was asking because obviously in the capital plan there's some money for seawalls and in the override that we're putting before the town mm -hmm. there's some money for seawalls. So it may be cost effective to you know merge the project. It doesn't Un look like it's going to work. Unfortunately we'd yeah. have to include that with the bid. We couldn't just award a change order of that magnitude to 
to one contractor. I'd love to be able to do right. it, but Master and Law won't let us because because of the way the contract's worded up. But I'd love to have a little extra money to say, yeah, you're right here. That area is damaged. Fix that area up for this this section of wall and and continue on. But what? But you don't think you could do that? We we don't have any money right now. No, no. I'm saying that. if town meeting passed a capital plan that has I don't think we have time where everything will kick in okay. in in time I think the um, judging from the last FEMA project we did it it moved very quickly um, they were able to do the work fairly quickly it, you, you're paying top dollar for very large equipment because they're moving 12 ton stones so um, you might be paying $300 an hour for an excavator um, or, and you might be paying top dollar to have a heavy truck come in with a 12 ton stone so and that's that's the type of armor stone that we're going to be setting. Well, the town meeting is not too far away, so it may coincide. But just it's something. It's a possibility. I, I mean, it'd be great. John? Stephen Lynch didn't bid on this. No. Seems funny. Um, he's done a lot with us before. I looked, he's, I know, I doing doing the he's he's done a lot of work before, and um, we actually went through because it was an addendum and a change in the time, and um, we called every bidder on the bidders list who right. got plans and left them a message the day before and told them um, that, you know, just a reminder, it's bidding tomorrow, and, and we never saw um, Right. Oh, all right. Well, I, I heard he was working in Marshfield. Maybe he's got more work in Marshfield. And Couldn't be too. Can't right. do it two sure. places at once. Mm -hmm. uh, motion, please. Sure. Yep. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract and supplemental agreement for the revetment repair project, contract 11-FS-02, to Northern Construction, Inc. of Weymouth, Massachusetts, for a total bid price of... Seven hundred eighty-six thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars, with payment to be made at the unit prices and/or lump sum prices, pending receipt of a certificate of insurance, one hundred percent performance, and one hundred percent labor and materials bond. Second, second by Mr. Harris for the discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, question, Mr. LeBlanc. I believe, um, correct, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, it's 75%, that's all? 75% is federal so federal money. federal funds, and then it's going to be a less than, than the, um, a little less than 25% because there's 50,000. Of the walls themselves, Kevin, the percentage of... Um, do, do we have an idea as to? We didn't calculate that. I know. I know the area down the glades is all on a private beach. Um, I believe the area in Second Cliff and Third Cliff is town-owned property, and that's that's a lot of the area that's being done. That's that's the biggest section. And one of our outs are the way the contract is kind of set up. One of the jetties that the equipment's probably going to have to cross the jetty to yeah. get to the work where it has to do and as he crosses the jetty he's going to have to rebuild it as he goes to have a stable platform is this in the jetty being out in the uh, near the lighthouse or the no. jetty out in uh, mine it off, off, off the excuse me I'm sorry go ahead whereabouts um off third cliff i believe okay uh, to get out on that other side okay we had a couple we had a couple areas so he's going to have to build his way in and, and build up some of the wall in second and third cliff area which would be helpful so the short answer is we don't know the exact percentage, but it sounds like there's probably estimating it, Kevin, two thirds, one third. Yeah, it, it could be somewhere around there. Yeah, I, we could do it money-wise, but um, somewhere in the ballpark of two thirds, <coughs> one third, or it'd take me a couple minutes to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, three quarters and, and a quarter, probably. Private versus public. Yeah, that that area. If we went out public, like from Peggy Beach, public. around out there, that area, a lot of that's all, I believe, is town owned land. Town owned land. Right. And that whole jetty and the the whole front of the wall, a lot of that's going to have to be rebuilt just to get out to where the work has to happen. So it's weighted heavily towards public repairment as opposed to private repairment. Th that could be fair. Yeah, that's the biggest that's the biggest portion off there. Right. And. So. Um, that a lot of people gave, you know, we, we requested rights of access through uh, different areas of town, and a lot of people came through with the rights of access. A couple of people didn't. They didn't want to see it happen unless we did work in front of their house, but a, a lot of people did step up in town, which was nice. Good question. Nobody asked it on the board, so. 
All right. Did we vote on that? I think we did, right, Kim? All right. Fair enough. Kevin, thank you very much. We're going to move on to the next agenda item, which is a discussion vote. <coughs> Situate Marine Park Uplands Project of 117 Edward Foster's Road. And Kevin, you've got a sidekick here. Yes, I do. I'm all dressed up for it. <laughs> all dressed up, which is good. Mark, good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. So we're talking about the um, Marine <coughs> Park, finally getting that all built out in the walks around the uh, Marine Center, correct? Yeah, very mm -hmm. good stuff. This is the park portion of the Situate Marine Park. When would they get started on it after the bids? What's the projected time to start? We're pushing this along the same as the um, same as the seawall project. We could be ready um, within three to four weeks to start up, provided the contractor is able to get his performance bond and um, everything else and his insurance requirements all set. Completion estimated, how long would it take? Days? We gave them uh, 120 days, but we're hoping to have them out of there um, middle to the end of June, or probably closer to the end. So maybe before Heritage Days or something along that part, where hope is, oh, yeah, so it would be nice for the town. Right. And we might slow them down a little bit if all the boats aren't moved, so mm -hmm. we can't claim it. Once they get a notice to proceed, we'll be meeting with Edward the boatyard operators to make sure everything's pretty closely coordinated because of that time of year. Drop boats will be going in, boats will be getting lined. They're going to be bringing equipment in there. So if you go to the Marine Center and you're in the parking lot facing the building itself, it's going to be taking place on the right-hand side going out and around, correct? Correct. Yeah. Great, great to see it. It is a CPC project. And the amount the high bidder, or the low bidder actually, is... Uh, <laughs> Um, T Ford Company. It's Mass Pavement it's Incorporated. Mass pavement. Okay. So are the paths made mass out pavement. of pavement? What what is the? It's walking paths, right? Walking it's not paths. the gangplank. No, no, these are these are walking paths and one other transitional um, way from the upper level down on to on the left the lower side. Level. Um, but we. Um, the plans were recently reviewed. Um, we are going to be meeting with the Commission on Disabilities. Jeff Dugan um, has taken a look at him, and he's got some comments that he wants to share with us. So we're anxious to make sure that his um, Yeah, I was just going to say, make sure you make it uh, accessible for dis or a uh, portion we, of it should we, be, whatever yeah, it is with Jeff Dugan. We understand Dugan. that you know, that's not only something that Good. we want to do, but it's something that we're required to do. So certainly we look forward to hearing from Jeff. Okay. It's and also the, the pathways are going to be out of, of pervious material um, it's gone through conservation like a year and a half ago, and any updates and they've been getting, you know, all clearance on. He's, and, uh, uh, they're he's also going to be doing, improving the drainage on the north side. There's going to be a swale put in to make sure that the parking lot and the boat storage area doesn't flood. Um, there's doing, they're doing work on the sort of the edge of the parking lot to the north of the Maritime Center where it gets down into the wetlands and hauling out all sorts of stuff that's there. And so it's going to be a general, in addition to the paths themselves, an overall improvement to the whole, the whole kit and caboodle up there. You know, you just raised a point, and I just, I, I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but I'm, I think maybe something we should consider as a board is to consult the uh, Commission on Disabilities and suggest to them um, during the reviewing process, not necessarily with this project, but I know with zoning and bill, um, plan, um, with the planning board, I don't believe they are a um, automatic referral source. In other words, when you receive a building packet, mm -hmm. usually there's automatic referrals with a number of departments, and I don't think the Commission on Disabilities is, which creates a lot of problems in the extent that, you know, after the fact something's built and they say they have their building permit, they haven't mm -hmm. had gone through the um, potential architectural design review, and the long and short of it is disability, so it's not accessible. And I was just thinking maybe we should write them a letter and say, it's a good idea. are there changes in the bylaws that maybe they should be at a referral so that when people go through this process, they don't get their permits and then find out after the fact, guess what, you haven't built something that's compliant with this accessibility, um, just a thought process. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not that I'm, I'm just going there. That's a good I've idea. Things. Usually in the plans, we yeah. it, it's set up so that they has to be built ADA requirements and, and everything else. So the engineer and the contractor are on the hook to make sure that they meet the requirements. I, it, it's never a bad idea to get everybody involved in it. I know from your perspective it is because it's a town project, but I, I know with the private end of things, sometimes for whatever reason they're sometimes missed, and so this way we can get them in the, the channel. But that's a whole other issue, but I just want to remember. Thanks, Kim. Any other questions? Mr. Norton? No. Motion? Motion. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract and supplemental agreement for the Citroën Marine Park Improvement Phase 4 
to Mass Payment Reclamation, Inc. of Hanover, Mass., for a total bid price of $154,349, with payment to be made at the unit price and or lump sum prices pending receipt of a certificate of insurance, 100% performance, and 100% labor and materials bond. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good, gentlemen. That's excellent. Thank you very much. We look forward to it. It should be very exciting. It is very exciting. Moving on to agenda item number um, nine, which is to accept a gift. Harbor Master's Department. Mark, welcome back again. It looks like you're looking uh, to accept a gift in the amount of $25,000. And this is from um, a longtime Cole Parkway uh, Marina patron, uh, the estate of Richard Clay, it looks like. And. Um, you know, I have to tell you, they're bequeathing $25,000 from his estate, and I think that's marvelous. It's very nice to see that any amount of money that's donated to the town, uh, no matter what the amount, in this case, it's a very thoughtful amount that he thought of. Um, any idea what the money's going to be used with, towards, uh, or? We haven't decided yet. Um, we want to get the money um, accepted. We'll get it into a, a gift account, and then we'll take a look at our needs and, and try to um, do something with it that will sort of reflect uh, Mr. Clay's spirit. You know, have they so. have they given any kind of like parameters or uh, no, anything? Left like entirely to our discretion. But um, uh, Dick was he was an outdoorsman. He was very he was an avid fisherman, a hunter. Um, he loved being on the water. So I think it'll be great if we can come up with something uh, again that sort of ref reflects that. Not that I'm um, it's a good problem pushing. Uh, it, it is. I have to tell you, one of the first things I look at because, but I'm not sure if it's in your purview. It might be ours, but uh, I look at that band shelter and I say it would be nice to build something that has a lot more dignity than what exists presently and make it a little bit more presentable. And what better location than being able to look out into the boats, into the harbor, into the right next to the uh, harbor masters than uh, building a much more um, a dignified location structure, but that's my only thought, Mr. Norton. Uh, just a thought after, if and when we accept this, and I certainly think we will, uh, that a letter be sent to the Mr. Clay's estate or family, thanking him for the gift. That's yep. Thank be. you. That's all I have. Right. Other questions from the board? All right. I'll motion on that. Move the board of select and vote to accept the kind gift of twenty-five thousand dollars from the estate of Richard Clay, on behalf of the town of Situate Harbor Master's Office. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Saying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mark, <coughs> thank you. Mr. Chair, if I can I go off agenda just for one quick second? Because sure. during other business, I was going to mention the Jericho ramp that yeah. seems to be starting oh, undergoing construction. And I thought maybe Mr. Patterson could probably do a far better job of it than I. And sure. so while he's sitting here, maybe you could mention something and just bring everybody up to speak what's going on briefly. Sure. The, uh, the reconstruction of the Jericho ramp is a project that has been in the queue for several years. Um, it's being funded by the Office of Fishing and Boating Safety, the former Public Access Board. Uh, they're paying for the entire project. Um, uh, I think the price tag is approximately $405,000. Uh, and again, no cost to the town. Um, the project has been engineered, designed, permitted. The Contract's been awarded to Sequoia Incorporated. They're a company out of Whitman, Massachusetts. And um, so all of that is the great news. And the fact that we're going to have a brand new boat ramp at the end of this is more good news. The If there is a downside to it, um, it's the fact that we have to begin construction it now. And it'll take about six to eight weeks. So that boat ramp could be tied up until May 1st. Um, again, this is the state's money. It's their schedule. Um, I think it's we're very, very fortunate to have this opportunity to have a brand new boat ramp. So the fact that we kind of have to take our medicine for the next few weeks um, will, in the end, be a small price to pay for the, for the benefit that it's going to provide to the town and the region. I and noticed they had good. excavators there. Is <coughs> they are. They're beginning to put the equipment there? Yeah, they're mobilizing. They're mobilizing the equipment. Um, they'll be blocking that ramp off any day now. Um, I think uh, there was a notification in the Patriot Ledger recently, and it's going to appear in the Mariner this week. I've talked with the commercial boat haulers in, in the area, Sims, um, who was talking with Brunel and Scalisi and some of the others. Uh, so we've gotten the word out to as many people as we can. And one other thing I, I, I thought of, that if there was a, a silver lining in any of this, um, is the fact that we have a first-class boatyard and boatyard operation uh, with Situate Boat Works going on over at the Situate Marine Park now. They're up and running. And they can certainly take a lot of that pressure that um, would otherwise go to the Jericho ramp now, some of the boat haulers, if need be,
they can haul the boats over to the marine park where those folks can launch them with their uh, brand new 35 ton travel lift. So as I mentioned, the silver lining, the silver lining may be that there might be a whole sector of people who would other not, well, otherwise never avail themselves to the services that are being provided over at the boatyard who are now going to go over there and experience that. So. Just on a personal note, this project started back when I was chair of waterways a fairly long time ago now, and Mark was the acting harbor master, I think, at the time. And so we're both really happy to see this finally come into pass. We've been in the queue for a long time, and now the money's flowing. So this who, is who, really Who was the grant writer? There's no, no grant. We pretty much... Um, it's not a grant coming to us that we pay for. The state's doing it entirely. We approached a gentleman named Jack Shepard. He used to be called the Public Access Board. Had conversations with him. They came down, did site visits. Mm -hmm. They looked at the plans. It's clearly there are big problems off the end of the ramp. Boats were running aground, et cetera, et cetera. Great. Mr. So, Harris. So what are they going to do, rip up the surface? And the whole thing. Or, yeah, right. Not so. just the surface. Go uh, on. Well, I, I meant where the, the ramp yeah. itself. And it's going to be shallower. Sean, so it's going to go steep. out a little further. Um, so you're not going to have that prop wash area because they're going to put an apron out there as well. They're redoing the floats, not the pier as all well. New, all new floats, all new pilings, all new signage. They're putting in new, um, a new electrical service at the end because uh, there was a light out there that's been uh, off and on for some time, so they're going to replace that. Parking lot, is that within the domain of waterways or is that within the domain of the town? The town parking lot parking is lot, the right? town's. Okay. The boat ramp is a state public access facility okay. under the guardianship or custodianship of the town. I'm all, fair enough. That's answered my question. Okay. Other questions? No. Mark, Thanks thank you. I appreciate it because that's actually you, that's important for the people to know. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, moving on to the next uh, 9A, a vote authorization government officer to sign school project funding agreement. Motion? Please. <coughs> Move that pursuant to Section 5-6 of the Town of Situa Charter and all application provisions of federal, state, and local law rules and regulations, after consultation with the school, uh, Situa School Committee, <coughs> that John F. Danny, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Situa, is hereby authorized to enter into fully execute on behalf of the Town of Situa the Massachusetts School Building Authority MSBA project funding agreement for the Wampatuck Elementary School and Gates School Project, so called. Uh, between the Town of Situate and the MSBA and to take any other action necessary to secure funding from the MSBA. Second. Discussion. The only question I have is is that John Danahy be spelt D-A-N-E-H-E-Y and not Dahaney. Other than that, I'd be happy to accept that motion. Seconded by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want me to do the second one? Sure. sure. Sound like you had a little dry throat there. Move the, move the pursuant to Section 5-6 of the Town of Situate Charter and all applicable provisions of federal, state, local laws, rules, and regulations. After consultation with the Situate School Committee, that John F. Danahy, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Situate, is hereby fully legally authorized to make final binding decisions with respect to the Wampatuck Elementary School and Gates School Project, so-called, as more fully described in the project funding agreement between the Massachusetts School Building Authority, MSBA, and the Town of Situate. Second. So seconded by Mr. Harris. And again, this was a, a correction on spelling, but it had nothing to do with, with Kim. I know it came from somewhere else because it's not Kim. Kim knows how to spell my name, but I appreciate that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Moving on to agenda item number 10. It's a vote, Class 2 license renewal of Allen's Auto Service at 2 Booth Hill, North Situate. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the Class 2 license held by Allen's Auto Service, 2 Booth Hill Road, North Situate. For 2011. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Say none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And uh, moving on to uh, agenda item 11. We're really blazing through this, folks, tonight. I can't believe it. Um, I probably shouldn't have said that. Accept resignation from the Recreation Committee and the Water Resources. C Kelly, you've missed. We're almost done. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Agenda item number 11. <coughs> Like a motion, please. Will the board of selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Nancy Ivis from the Recreation Commission? Further, the board thank Ms. Ivis for her years of dedicated service to the commission. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor, say aye. 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 Will the board of selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Hart Peterson from the Water Resource Committee? And further, the board thank Mr. Peterson for his years of dedicated service to the committee. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. Further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> Very good. 
Okay. Uh, how about appointments for the Recreation uh, Commission? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Eric Richmond as a full member of the Recreation Commission. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Say none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mm -hmm. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Wanda Craig and Marshall Robitaille to the 375th Anniversary Celebration Committee. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Say no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Other business. We haven't done this in the past, at least, I think, two or three meetings, so I expect there's probably a lot on the plate. Mr. Harris, would you like to start, at least maybe on basketball? Sure. <coughs> all right. Yeah, just a couple of things. First of all, I just wanted to mention, and Kim was nice enough to also copy this it was a um, an award that the Recreation Commission as well as course received most of you may or may not have heard about it and there's a little um, write-up that I could get in one second I could just read it out loud uh, sure. kind of outlines how it happened and so forth and it's uh, was printed in I believe the Mariner the situate uh, community of resources for special education or course in the Situate Rec Department have been selected as recipients of the Massachusetts Recreation and Park Association's Program Outreach Award. The awards for a nonprofit organization that's gone over and above regular programming to provide a benefit to the community and rec and the recreation director Jennifer Vitelli submitted a letter of the recommendation for course. In the recreation department in November, back in November, the award ceremony will be on Wednesday, March 16th in Hyannis. Um, just a, a quote that from the director that uh, sent this. He read the description for the award and immediately thought that the Course Foundation <coughs> in, our, in their collaboration was really thrilled last week that they were chosen. Said, oh, that was Jennifer's quote. And finally, um, it was a unanimous decision by the board to select this group. Quite, a, quite an honor. Um, secondly, this is, I'm going to steal a Tony Stunder here. Um, last Saturday night, I had probably one of the best times I attended my daughter's um, basketball game, the Varsity Girls Basketball Game. Uh, it was held at uh, UMass Boston. They lost by 10 seconds. The score was tied 10 seconds ago, and they lost by two. It was, uh, I can see why Tony gets so excited when he talks about the programs, especially when his kids are involved in them, because it was, Pretty neat to sit there and see all the people from Situate. I went up with a couple that they didn't even have children in the program, and they just lived in Situate, and it was it was pretty amazing. And those girls, uh, it, it's fun to watch. I'd rather watch things like that than the professional sports. It, it's really neat. Um, and just one last thing, if I could have another minute. And well, Saturday I was busy, so Saturday morning I volunteered to help with the sailing signups. And I've mentioned this before, but I just have to mention it again. Um, Sign-ups were about, I think, at 9 o'clock, and by 10 o'clock, 200 people had gone through this program, signed up. And it's pretty neat to, to sit there and, and, and help out, and it, it's really, it's very easy. But to see so many people so happy to be there to sign their kids up for the, this program, and the comments that I heard were only, how can we expand on this program, you know? And, and I think Joe, right from the beginning of, you know, trying to convince, and he didn't have to really convince us at the time to buy the Marine Park and so forth, was part of it was to have a sailing program. And it is just, you just have to witness that. They started lining up at quarter four in the morning to sign up. You, when I got there at 8.30, the beach chairs were 50 deep all lined up but the people had gone inside they were able to get inside and if I could I just want to mention you know it's not only it's nice to see that but it's nice to see the the instructors and some of the kids Kim's daughter for one who have come back to help with this with this project and it just goes so smooth and if I could just have a minute I'm just gonna mention their names if that's all right with you guys uh, there was Brent until 10 o'clock I mean, right, right well it was Brendan Horgan Maddie Vachon, Brenna Galvin, Kevin Burt, Michael Keefe, John Ward, Sam Malone, Ed Vachon, and Katie Donovan, Kim's daughter. So it was just a pretty exciting weekend for me. So that's it. We're always talking about waterways, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one item, Mr. Chairman, I noticed, uh, I believe I read, read in the paper somewhere that we will not be receiving funding, uh, federal funding for the December storm. 
Uh, we didn't reach, uh, nor did Plymouth County reach either one, the, the level uh, necessary to, to, to uh, receive any federal funding. So unfortunately, that all the public losses on that store won't be borne by the town alone. So I just want to bring that to everyone's attention. Thank you. That's a good point, and uh, because I don't think, I'm not sure how much it was reported, but I think it's worth saying that, you know, the Christmas 2010 storm, all the public costs are going to have to be borne by the town, the situate, and it's the most unfortunate, you know, uh, for us. Yeah. Mr. Vignani. Well, a couple of things, and, and Sean may have been a little modest. The girls' basketball team had a phenomenal they year. Did. They were ranked like number two in our whole area, and they made it to their division finals. So if they had won, they would have been playing at the Garden you know, the next week. It was a great year, and it was a terrible, uh, terrible loss that it, it, they came so close. So, But I heard it was a wonderful game. Um, on top of that, the boys' basketball team had a great year, too. They won a couple playoff games, and, um, um, and the hockey team had a phenomenal year as well, and they lost in a shootout in the uh, semifinals of their division. So... Uh, it was a 1-1 game, and they lost in a shootout. I guess the other team scored on their first shootout, and, and the goalies uh, stopped everybody else. So it was a great a great year for winter sports uh, for our high schools. A um, couple other quick things. Um, as some of you may have seen in the paper, um, uh, Senator Carey came to Situate this weekend. Um, Joe and I were at the, uh, uh, the Maritime Center where um, Jeff Rosen and his crew gave a presentation for the Massasoit um, MEA, is that what, M-E-A-A -A yeah. or something? Uh, Educational Alliance. Right. Uh, their uh, coalition to try and uh, um, get the school open that we talked about several months ago. Um, and it was good to see him. It was, it was kind of like, uh, uh, Joe, what would you say, kind of like rock star status where yeah. he's coming <laughs> to town and everyone's kind of, he's around the corner, he'll be here in a minute. Um, and he did his political thing. But he was very, very gracious and listened to the ideas and, and, uh, and supported the project. Um, and uh, I thought uh, Jeff Rosen did a great job with the presentation. Don Walter did a great job with the architectural stuff of it. And it was, uh, it was at the Maritime Center, which looked great. It was a beautiful day, and it was a really good turnout. So it was nice to see him come down and make the trip down for that. And again, the, the outcome was positive in him endorsing the project. Um, the only other thing I have, which John may have on his list, is uh, just this Sunday is the uh, parade. Um, St. Patrick's Day Parade starts at uh, Gates and goes through down to Front Street. Um, so hopefully the weather will be good and everyone will get out there and enjoy the holiday. Mm -hmm. Mr. Murray. Um, I have nothing to add other than the conversation we already had with Mark Patterson about the Jericho boat ramp. And Kelly, you had stepped out of the room. So if you could uh, follow up with Mark Patterson because they're doing construction on that ramp starting now. We need to get word out, and the time frame is actually pretty favorable for us. So we had a long conversation about that, but it, that's the only thing I have right now. Thank you. Great. Um, not much. I just um, a few things I was just going to mention. You've hit them all up. Um, you know, I think I was driving by the uh, Whittles Walk, and I think I know Bob uh, Sanderson's back, and I think they've closed it down. So you know, as far as like walking and doing things, which means it's turning into golfing season. So for everybody who's getting the itch to go out and golf. Contact Bob, contact the course, start setting up. I think you get your, uh, your, your, uh, your passes and plans on doing stuff. It's pretty exciting. Um, which brings me to the next one, which is when you're driving down the driftway, it's, it's kind of uh, awful to the extent that there's a lot of garbage and trash, which gets us to cleanup day or ship shape day, which is going to be a little over a month away. But people should start thinking about that. And if there's no uh, storms, uh, try to get out and start picking up if you can. Um, is there a date yet for that? You know? Usually it's the beginning of March, or uh, May, and um, I was going to ask um, Al if, and uh, his wife Donna if there's uh, anything set, but at the yeah. next meeting we'll have it. Let's have that first Saturday of yeah. May. Okay. So it's yeah. kind of an Earth Earth Day. I think generally is kind of centered around. So keep that in mind. Um, the only other two things were um, I know that in the future I want to set on an agenda this parking of Cole Parkway as a kind of like things coming attractions to talk about discussing and. Uh, maybe reconfiguring it and maybe trying to do some things for uh, long-term parking and generating some funds and also thinking about getting some green space. And also uh, the Pier 44 community is going to be coming to us uh, in two weeks. So people who are interested, sit tight, tune in, and um, it says Timothy Leary, tune in and tune out or whatever. But uh, 
uh, any event. That's it. So uh, moving on to uh, the next agenda item, which is Agenda 14. Seeing that I was supposed to try to see if I could get it in 25 minutes, I failed. I did it in uh, 55. Um, I'll take a motion. Agenda meeting at 8 o'clock. Second. Adjourned by uh, Mr. Norton, seconded by Mr. Go. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Folks, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Blank. Good night, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank Boy, you, John.